from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now, here's your host, Dave Vellante. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this special Cube conversation. It's part of our partner series sponsored by HPE, Hewlett Packard Enterprise. And we've been drilling into the role that partners play, the value that they add as, as they emerge as the sort of new breed of nimble system integrator. Tim Ferriss is here and he's with Green Pages. And we're going to do a disaster recovery drill down. It's a topic that is extremely important. It's relevant uh, to this day and age. Tim, thanks for coming on. My pleasure, thank you for having me. So DR, it's, it's traditionally been expensive, complicated, um, hairy, scary, but necessary. What should we know about DR today and the state of DR? Well, like you said, I think a lot of people have written it off as prohibitively expensive, and uh, certainly in the small and medium business. Uh, but you know, with the advent of cloud, uh, with, it, with the explosion of cloud services, uh, DR as a service has made uh, cloud-based uh, uh, cloud DR and disaster recovery affordable for even the small business. It's taken a lot of the uh, complexity, some of the complexity out of it, and it's certainly, some, uh, for some clients, it's the first steps toward a cloud journey. Mm -hmm. right. You know, my, my friend Fred Moore, uh, former storage tech, uh, senior vice president of, of strategic planning, is famous for coining the term, uh, backup is one thing, recovery is every, anything. And it applies to DR, you know, failover is one thing, fail back is, is right. everything. And, you know, a lot of times it's just, you know, too dangerous to test mm -hmm. failing back. Um, how is DR evolving, particularly for the small and mid-sized businesses, such, such that they can have confidence that not only can they check a box sure. for, their, for their corporate boards, but they, if there's a disaster, they can actually recover. This sim similar to that, to that phrase, uh, yeah, the, the DR is not just a replication exercise, right? Not getting, just getting d uh, data from point A to point B, but automating that um, and automating the, the testing and creating run books around, around that data. I think some things have certainly made that easier over the years. Uh, you know, I, I was an early uh, uh, delivery consultant for solution, uh, for uh, VMware's site recovery manager. Um, thankfully, I've used it much more for um, uh, in cases of uh, data center migration than I have for actual disasters. Uh, but the, you know, it, it was a fantastic uh, automation tool, but used other technologies to get the data from point A to point B and, and replicate that data. Uh, some things that have made that easier over the years for people and more affordable, uh, bandwidth is cheaper, so you've got to get that data, still got to get that data from point A to point B, and it was prohibitively, the pipe was prohibitively expensive. Could it keep up with my rate of change? Um, so, but uh, bandwidth is becoming less and less expensive and less and less of a, uh, a hindrance there. Uh, the software and the technologies, uh, typically back in the old days it was array-based uh, replication. You needed to have like arrays in, in uh, production in DR. So I, I have an all flash array in production, I need that same array in DR. Well, maybe that's, maybe I want to spend money on an all flash array for a, for a use case that I hope I never need. Right. You know, I'll test, but never need it. And you know, our, our partner HPE has done some great things there, letting you replicate from a nimble all flash array to a hybrid array in DR, let some people save some money there. But for our small and medium business, for those who want to get out of the data center business, maybe they want to start with DR. Uh, DR as a service has been a, you know, a, big, uh, a big mover for us. Um, you know, a, lot of, uh, a lot of traction with that over the past uh, year or two. So, I mean, one of the concerns that you, you hear this from security practitioners all the time is that they're drowning in point products and sort of DR was sort of the same. I, I as the customer, had to become the system integrator or mm -hmm. had to engage and spend a lot of money figuring out that, that system. So the DR as a service, kind of takes care of all that, doesn't it? It, it does, it, it offloads not only the operational uh, maintenance of the, of the DR infrastructure, but you're, you can leverage their years of expertise in, in DR uh, functions. You know, again, hopefully folks don't have a ton of experience failing over from disasters. You know, hopefully you only have that never happens or it happens once. Um, but, but these folks have are seasoned veterans in, in DR, so you get to not only leverage them, their service, 
taking care of the operations of it, but uh, you get their expertise for design. So I got to ask you, you mentioned bandwidth, and, and <laughs> was, we always joke, old mainframers, that the, the fastest way to get data from point A to point B is the Chevy truck access method, <laughs> the CTAN. And, and so, and that was tape in, in the days, and mm -hmm. big, large companies still use tape. I mean, the big hyperscaler guys use tape. I, I presume it's not, it's, I presume it's pretty much dead in small business and maybe even It's a dirty business, word. I get dirty looks when yeah, I so, mention but, tape. But do folks. people still use tape for DR? St Last people, resort type of thing. People do, I, I would say increasingly, if people are using tape, it's used for those work, those less critical workloads. Those people are looking, people, you know, hopefully any, anybody who's, who's uh, performing a business continuity initiative will tier their workloads. You know, they have their tier zero, those things that need to be up and running hot in the data center, those tier ones with the RTOs, so the recovery time objectives in the minutes. Um, tape, you, you only want to use that for recovery time objectives maybe in the weeks. Right, right. <laughs> and I hope you point. never have, and I hope to, you do never it. have to do it. Okay, exactly. so pretty much, I mean, I've always hated tape, but 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 it, it's still not dead yet. It, it isn't, <laughs> no, people are trying to. But okay, yeah. so thinking uh, as, a, as an architect, um, mm -hmm. uh, let's say I'm a small, let's say mid-sized business, because there's some okay. other challenges that, that, that are there. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I used to have, you know, sort of backup over here and recovery, and then I think about D are, it wasn't mm -hmm. integrated. What should I be doing in terms of bringing those disciplines together? How should I be thinking about architecting a disaster recovery solution from, from my client? Where do I start? Well, you, you should start uh, by assessing uh, the, the applications. So don't start at the VM level or the, the physical workload level. Um, hear from your business, what are those services that they need to provide in the event of a disaster? So a, a business continuity plan needs to be in place before we, you should take on a disaster recovery architecture initiative. Um, so having that input is key to the, to, the, to the disaster recovery process. So assess, assess what services need to be up and when, tier them, um, so, and then investigate, we, we investigate with our clients several different methods of protection and a DR, a DR architecture won't just consist of DR as a service or a physical prem-to-prem -prem replication environment. It could contain many different types of uh, protection. Uh, DRAS for some products for our virtual workloads, um, application-based hot protection for SQL or database workloads and that sort of thing using native application uh, replication. So a lot of different things you can you can do and it's not just a one size fits all. It's really a, a mosaic of things. Tailoring the solution based on the application's value. Yes. And that gets into so you know <laughs> funny discussions with you know people always say, well speak in business terms and so you sit down with business people say, what do you want your RPO and RTO to be? And they go, what? <laughs> we go, okay, RPO. How much data are you willing to lose? And they go, yeah. none. Yeah. Oh, how much money do you have? <laughs> you know? And yeah. after you have a, a problem, how fast do you want to get it back? What are you talking about instantaneously? How much money do you have? So yeah. this notion of recovery point objective, recovery time objective, it's sometimes not business speak. How, how do you translate uh, geek into wallet and wallet yeah. into geek? Well, yeah, assigning, have you, you asked the question, have you assigned a value to downtime? You know, how much is it going to cost you to be down? And I, I don't like to go into customers and hit them with a lot of FUD, uh, you know, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And, but, you, you know, it should, a good business should uh, value how much downtime or loss of data will cost the business, and then use that to determine what they need to spend on uh, on DR in order to make sure that that doesn't happen. Well, you know, it's interesting. So, ha and, ha and having had those conversations with many CIOs in the past, it, and it used to be email was mission critical, and, and it still is in many ways, mm -hmm. but of course, the vast majority of people have outsourced their, their email to right. oh, wherever, is, Microsoft yeah. or yeah. whomever, Google, um, and, and so now it becomes, uh, so the answer to that question is, what does it cost you when, when it's down? Is it, well, it depends what system is down. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's my transaction system and I'm a retailer online, well, I'm and it's, it's it's Black Friday, I'm losing a lot of money. Right. Um, and, and so, do people have a sense of the cost of downtime or the the value of their data and their applications? I, I think a lot of times they they do not, and and it takes some encouragement in order to uh, to help them realize that. I think for some it's just so for for our retail customers. I think it's just so obvious mm -hmm. that uh, uh, to them they're they're hyper uh, focused on uh, on on that value. So we get a, just like. You know, it's it's unfortunate, but during hurricane season, we have a lot of conversations with folks about uh, about DR because it's top of mind for everybody. For our retail customers, 
uh, their hurricane season is you know Black Friday and beyond. They right. want to make sure that they have a solid solution leading into Black Friday because you know a minute of downtime can mean you know thousands and thousands of dollars worth of uh, lost business and revenue. So. I think more and more it's becoming uh, commonplace for people to put value on it, but you still run into folks who haven't. Okay, so, and I, I get it, it's, it's an insurance sell, it's mm. somewhat of a fear, mm. it's an yeah. uncertainty sell. It's not a fear of missing out, it's a fear of <laughs> losing, you know, all your data. Yeah. Um, and, and so, okay, so let's, let's assume, so you guys can help me get through the business case, let's assume I, I get there. Yeah. Um, how are people sort of moving forward? How fast are they moving forward? And how critical is it for their digital transformations? Um, so, so how fast are people? People, I think, are moving. We're having the conversation with more and more folks. More and more folks are finding value in disaster recovery. Um, and uh, we are helping them through that by helping them through that assessment and providing the value. I think another big value for the IT uh, for the IT establishment is not just providing a service the best that they can do, but getting some buy-in from the business on, let's, let's agree what a, what a reasonable uh, recovery time objective is. Mm -hmm. And let's agree, understand that I can give you a zero RPO, uh, re recovery point objective, or a near zero, a synchronous uh, replication, uh, but it's going to cost X amount of money so that th the business is taking some ownership for the quality of the, of the disaster recovery solution and the, the tightness of the RPO and RTO. And you, you empower the business to make those decisions by giving them options. And I think we help our businesses, the customers we work with. So, so it's important, I mean, maybe it's worthwhile getting a little didactic here, but, but we're talking about you know, RPO zero means essentially you, you're, you're not losing any data right. on a disaster, which is very, very, probably is no such thing technically as RPO zero. Yeah, the closest is you know, synchronous replication and, and that sort of thing, so near zero. Right, so, so you take, you, you do synchronous replication you know, within some physical metro area. Metro yeah. area. Yeah. Of course the problem is if you get hit with a major disaster, then yeah. they, they both to go out, so you have to do async. Yeah, and when, under yeah, cr frankly, just understanding what type of disaster you're asking me to engineer for. Is it right. a, is it a localized fire in the data center? Is it an earthquake? Is it, is it an earthquake? Hurricane. Regional disaster affecting the whole coast? Katrina, right? Yeah. So so understanding what you're, or is it you know, I, we, we to this day, IT organizations are getting calls from upper management. Um, you know, if they have a power failure in the building, you know, okay, let's fail over to our disaster recovery site, and the power is going to be on in an hour or so. Yeah. And you know, knowing when to make that decision is is, is critical as well, and not using it too trivially. Um, you know, fail over. So, so, if you're in a zone where you have a high probability of some kind of disaster that's going to wipe out both synchronous, you know, mm -hmm. platforms. You go asynchronous, but then the problem becomes speed of light. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a little bit of you know, or it could be a lot of could, could affect delay. The, could affect the performance of the application uh, too while you're waiting for that synchronous. That's right. right yeah, so that, that could be your knowledge. revenue hit, but it could be you know, can, can you handle five, five minutes of lost data? Yeah, yeah, sure. I can probably recreate mm -hmm. that. How about 15 minutes? Yeah, maybe. I'll, how about an hour? How about half a day? Mm -hmm. hmm. How about a day? Now you start to get into the business discussion of really what's the value, mm -hmm. and, and now you can architect around those things. You can pretty pretty much, if you throw money at it, you can solve any problem as an architect, mostly. You, you absolutely right? but can. But then is that balance of the business case, right? Exactly, so so yeah, by, and by showing, and, and what we'll often do is we'll do the assessment and then we'll perform a workshop on various different ways in which we can uh, solve a problem and we can show the client um, in the business, okay, well we can do what you asked for, it will cost X and that's very expensive, but we can do, do it this way a little bit differently or combine a couple ways that may increase your RPO a little bit, but they're much more affordable. It, you know, is that, a, and they can make a decision based on that. Something you said before, Tim, resonated with me, which was it's not one size fits all, which says to me, I need the technology to be able to be, give me the granularity mm -hmm. that I can map to the application based on the cost the downtime or the value of the application. And, right. and it sounds like I'm inferring that that type of modern technology exists today. <laughs> Uh, abs absolutely, so b besides just that there are a number of different ways that applications can be protected, you know, uh, Active Directory needs to be protected using 
its native replication. Uh, Oracle and SQL have their own methods of, of protection. Right. So does uh, so does Exchange, but virtual workloads uh, certainly you can dial up or down the protection using DRAS with a product behind it, like a like a Zerto, uh, a replication and automation host-based replication mm -hmm. capability. And it, it you know host-based it, it it makes things a bit easier for clients because they can very granularly choose individual VMs without having to house them on a, speci a specific volume that's replicated. And, and have to do all that mapping in the back end. It takes a lot of the complexity out of mm -hmm. things. And you can assign different priorities to those machines. So I could be replicating 100 machines, but 10 of them are more important. I want to make sure that those 10 get all the bandwidth they need to keep the lowest possible RPO. And certainly there are technologies mm -hmm. out there and, and we are partners with, with some providers who can let you dial in. What role does HPE play in this whole equation? Uh, right, so, so HPE for, for prem to prem uh, disaster recovery uh, technologies, it's, it's fantastic because I think I mentioned it earlier, you know, it used to be we have some, we have some very high end workloads residing in primary data centers uh, living on all flash arrays, so a nimble or a three par all flash array, those are, those are expensive technologies necessary to run the business in, in, in normal circumstances. But for DR, for a solution that you hope you never need, uh, you can replicate to a, a, an all flash nimble to a hybrid a solution, a hybrid nimble in DR, thereby saving yourself some money. So, you know, a hybrid flash array, an adaptive flash array in DR that is fronted by SSD mm -hmm. and RAM, uh, but costs more like an HDD or a spinning disk array. So, HP is allowing us to do some things that help, uh, help save some money there as well. All right, Tim, thanks very much. It was a great conversation and uh, really appreciate your perspectives. All right, thank you, Dave, my All pleasure. Right, you're welcome, okay, thank you for watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante with theCUBE, we'll see you next time.